Another video today, and uh, what is this video going to be about? It's going to be about two things. Number one, it's going to be about why does top lane suck so hard right now. Number two, it's going to be about what can be done to change it. Now, I did take two. This is going to be my third take of the video. The first one was 22 minutes. The second one mm, was a little bit bad. But this is the third one. This one's going to stick. It's going to be perfect. So, why does top lane suck so hard right now? I'm going to try to keep this video under 15 minutes because I think that's reasonable that's about what reddit can do uh videos longer than that don't tend to do too well so why does top lane suck so hard right now there was a uh i think there's a reddit post up uh yesterday or two days i've been sick the last three days so i haven't really been up and up you know i've actually been down and down so uh basically i was looking through it and there was one guy who was like uh basically summarize it in the best way i can think of the best way to explain why does top lane suck so hard right now why is top lane the least impactful in masters and challenger it, it's very easy actually top lane is the only lane where you are consistently left there to rely on your jungler now let me explain this for you because some other lanes don't quite understand what i mean by that if i'm a top laner and i'm against some of these champions there is actually nothing i can do other than to wait for my jungler there's nothing I can do. I can't out-trade them. I can't poke them. I can't do a fucking thing against them. This is almost an alien concept for other lanes, but let me try to explain this the best I can. Imagine every single lane matchup was like Malzahar against Ari, or Malzahar against any one of Faker's champions at Worlds because Malzahar is impossible to fight and has single-handedly lost SKT the first Worlds Finals. Something like that, you know? Uh, maybe something like Mal Riot's failure to balance Malzahar has lost SKT their first world championship. Oh, wait, that has nothing to do with it. Anyway, um, imagine every bot lane matchup was Draven against Vayne. You know, just completely one-sided. You can't do anything. But worse than that, it's like 15 times worse than that. For example, um, if I'm playing Jax against Jace, Jace can beat me in melee, poke me at range, knock me out of any of my combos that I try to get onto him. If I jump on him, stun him with Counter-Strike, he turns around, uh, does a Q, goes in, you know, presses W, goes into melee form, does a second Q, auto, 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 E. I lose two-thirds of my health bar, he loses one-third of his. So, even in my best-case scenario, there's not a fucking thing I can do about it. You know, that's top line. There's nothing you can do except wait for the jungler. Except, um... Imagine you're doing a hacky sack race and there's two people in the sack for some reason and the second person decides to kick you in the dick because fuck it. And that's playing top lane. The person who you're relying on to help you kicks you in the dick for no apparent reason. And it sucks. It sucks so unbelievably hard to the point where I'm, I'm actually... I'm not trying to be dramatic here, but I'm actually done with ranked. I, I'm just going to play my fucking ult until Rad does something about this. Because I swear to God, this is the most bullshit thing I've ever seen. This is the worst meta. This is the worst top lane it's ever been. I mean, I want to get back to the days where, I, where Irelia's two-second stun was the worst of my issues. Where going, it's hard to get a kill on Irelia because of the two-second stun. Err, she can kind of burn. That's what I want to get back to. I want to get back to bitching about Irelia. I don't want to be bitching about fucking Tank Teemo. I never in my life thought, wow, if Tank Teemo was viable, Riot wouldn't do anything about it. I fully believed, you know, me, four years ago, me, if Tank Teemo was viable and was, was in Challenger, and was beating people i would i would say i swear to god i would say well Mor morello is gonna deal with that obviously morello will deal with that because that's bullshit and ma that makes the game less fun but these new developers they just seem to say well fuck it play orn and that's their answer to every situation what do i do about panthan oh fuck it play orn what do i do about shen oh fuck it play orn what do i do about swain oh fuck it play orn nar jace riven any of these champions oh fuck it play orn now, the thing is, Riven's not even the worst. Like, I want to get back to bitching about Riven. Please, Riot. Let's go back to the good old days of I try to fight a champion, they try to fight me, they kill me in a stun, and I go, how annoying. Let's get away from these days of K Teemo actually just stands in front of me and auto-attacks me to death. The days of Kenny literally just procs his ultimate while I'm in melee and kills me from full health. You know, let's, let's get away from those days, okay? So, these are champions uh, with zero counterplay. The, the, I'm going to go through all these. Now, this isn't a definitive list. I pretty much made this all of 20 minutes ago, okay? So, don't bite my head off. This isn't shit I've thought through completely. So, I'm just trying to get the idea out there that there are a lot of champions who are completely just... 
and I've been I've been complaining about this for two seasons. It's been two seasons of me saying, "Hey, when are you guys gonna do something about Pantheon? When are you gonna do something about Jace? When are you gonna do something about Timo?" And instead of fixing any of the issues, they just make it worse every goddamn time. They make it worse, and that entire last three minute rant monologue is really why top lane sucks right now the fact that my 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 videos are getting popular and they're getting posted on the front page of reddit and people are upvoting them and everybody's going yay i love those videos that says a lot doesn't it does that not say a lot there's a large uh let's call it silent minority of top laners who are basically just pressing that upvote button being like hey right he's right could you maybe do something about that like, we're not going to make our own video, but maybe you could listen to that guy, right? Could you, like, do something? So, I'm going to go through all these. Akali is bullshit. I'm not going to explain why she's bullshit. We all know why she's bullshit. The second they made Shroud a complete effective invulnerability, unless you were a champion like Kled or Lee Sin, this champion went from Shroud is kind of like a counter to another ability. You know, you kind of pop it and you go stealth. And now it's kind of like, I can use it to murder you repeatedly. Okay, so here's the problem. She throws a Q at you, you wait. She shrouds forward, auto attacks you, procking the Q, throws a second Q, procs it, walks back in the shroud. That's very difficult to out trade, nearly impossible to out trade. And if it doesn't work, she literally just throws Qs on you forever. Now, that would be fine if using a bad shroud was actually a hindrance. So this duration needs to be reduced massively maybe two seconds is too long but this ability is actually completely bonkers op you can literally just shroud and stand back and outweigh the entire atrox passive for christ's sake like it the the ability moves you and stealths you you know that's what it should do that's its effect the fact that it then makes you invulnerable for eight seconds it doesn't let anyone do anything to you that's so fucking over the top it's absurd this champion is just I don't, like, you can't beat a Kali unless you get a jungler. Like, that's it. That's, so, please, reduce the shroud duration so normal fucking champions can compete. Teemo, and I, I, I guess I put Heimerdinger in the same category, nerf the shit out of them until you rework them. Uh, how many Heimer mains have to joke that Heimer has been actually buffed against melee and can actually one-shot any melee champion that tries to fight back against them? Literally, all you have to do is Heimer is poke at melee champions non-stop. The second they try to fight you, you throw a grenade on them, you miss all of them, they lose their entire health bar, literally their entire health bar, and they die. Oh, but don't fight in the turrets. Okay, so where the fuck do I fight if not in his turrets? He's at my turret. Turret line outside my turret. What, do I stand in my turret until he missiles me to death under turret? Oh, but he's using missiles. He can't... Uh, shut up. This sh Both these champions are so stupid. Why should ranged... Poke champions also beat me in an all-in. The onus of these champions should be keeping me at range and poking me and preventing me from all-inning them. They should not be able to go full health to full health and beat me in that trade. If I'm at full health and I'm a bruiser, I should beat them. Okay? They should not be... Because they have disengages. First off, Teemo gets uh, a movement speed buff and a blind. Heimendinger gets a goddamn stun. Heimerdinger can also run through his turrets and, you know, fuck you up that way. His, his super turret's got to slow or some shit. Like, these champions aren't exactly helpless if I jump on them. So, please, for the love of God, nerf these two champions. Um, Kenny, we, I've talked about this before. They did a number of changes that effectively gave him unlimited energy. I don't want to go into that now, but basically, this champion actually needs a weakness. And he needs to have lower stun duration early game as well i don't really want to get into the details on this champion too much we all saw it at worlds we all saw that they just picked kenny they shut down jacks there's nothing he could do nobody picked a bruiser after that because everyone realized oh it's fucking pointless because you can just pick kenny and that's that then maokai uh i don't want to get this again we've all played well top laners have played against maokai and maybe that's where i'm wrong People don't understand how shitty top lane is because they haven't played it. But Maokai literally just auto attacks bruisers to death for like the entire first half of the game. Like shit's just wacky, you know. And even if you can beat him in all in, he just kills you away. I just hit my mic. He just kills you away, and you're you're just hard peeled. So he, it it just it's so dumb. Like I know Cho'Gath and Maokai are kept overpowered because they want them to jungle, but fuck their jungle. Fuck their jungle. They should not be able to jungle. 
if they're going to be that overpowered top lane they shouldn't be able to jungle nerf their top lane to a reasonable level i don't really care how actually just allow them to actually be beaten by bruises as in an all lane cho'gath should not be able to poke me with his e while at the same time if i actually get on top of him and get a good trade he actually just trades evenly with me anyway riven don't buff riven seriously right fuck off stop Every single time, Riven is even not at a... F like, here's what blows my mind. Riven is one of the more popular champions in the game. Doesn't she have, like, a 5% play rate right now? Yet every excuse Riot makes for, oh, why don't we nerf Riven? Why is Riven totally balanced? Every time, it's, oh, because she's got a high skill cap. Sorry, if that many people can get that good of a win rate on Riven, maybe she doesn't have a high skill cap. Maybe she's just overpowered. You know... One of the two things need to happen. A, if she truly does have a high skill cap and maintains a good win rate and play rate, she's overpowered. Two, she doesn't have a high skill cap. Now, choose one of those two options because based on the stats, one of those two is true. You cannot argue with simple stats. Pantheon. Fuck Pantheon. Seriously. If you ever play a bruiser and they pick Pantheon, it's like, oh, fuck it. I give up. No, nope, I give up. You, you just want to dodge at that point. You seriously do. You, if you're in your fucking promos to, to Masters and you got uh, two wins, two losses, you'd rather be like, fuck it. I'll just dodge this game and start my next promos in a win, and then I can actually get a matchup I can win. Because this shit is so insane. 54% win rate for two fucking years, Riot! I know I sound very frustrated because, look, League of Legends is meant to be a fun game. How fun is it when you fight Pantheon and this fucking idiot is just going Q, 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 yay, I won the lane. Like, is that fun for me? No, that just stresses me out. That just pisses me off. Fucking, like, gold players get into my uh, games and they'll just be uh, like, oh, they'll be like, oh, Shin Shin, how are you losing? Oh, they pick Pantheon. But, but he's gold. I'm like, yeah, but he found his Q key, so I guess I lose. Jace needs to be absolutely annihilated. You've all read, like, you guys have probably read through all this shit. Uh, basically, make his E, like Maokai's Q, instantly knock you back instead of doing that slow thing. So, if he knocks you, like, if he Q's into you, then he hits you with his E, he can't instantly just walk the other direction. Like, you'll just gap close back into him. That's what I want. He should be punished for using his abilities like a goddamn moron. Nar, this is very simple. This champion... Like, I know Riot loves Gnar because, oh, the elf, yeah, it's big plays, but it sucks. It sucks so hard that if I ever fight Gnar, I can't kill him because he farms with Q. And we saw that at the World's Finals. Both teams picked Gnar. They both tried to counterpick him. He just farmed with Q till he outscaled. The outscale is the issue. I'm sorry. A champion should not be able to farm that easily, team fight that well, and also be able to 1v1 that goddamn well. I thought for 100% sure. When that Gnar meleeed that Camille to death in the uh, LCK, was it finals or something like that? I swore to you. I swore to you. I said, there's no way they don't nerf Gnar after this. Like, it's so obvious. It's so in front of you how broken this champion is. And instead, it was just like fucking crickets. So like, oh, right? It's like, no, we didn't see that. LCS big plays. Okay, so Swain, I think, is very frustrating. Maybe not as bad as the other ones. Basically, his Torment, his E, is mana cost 65 to 85. Bump that to 85 flat. That'll reduce his poke damage, especially in the early game. That needs to go down. Additionally, it reduces base armor by 2. That won't affect his mid to late game as much, but what it will do is allow him to be all in a bit easier early game and actually manage to lose trades. Shen, um... These are numbers that maybe aren't that apparent. Basically, level 1 to 6, I've nerfed the base damage on his Q by 10. So if he hits you with 3 Qs, bam, 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 it does 30 less damage. That's a pretty decent nerf, and I think that'll take Shen out of being broken. Okay, so um, here's some changes to Masteries, uh, Keystones, especially to help Bruisers be played. Currently, let me explain this to you guys. The proc damage on Pressy Attack, the 30 to 120 damage, that proc damage gets 12% bonus damage right now, okay? Just so we're clear, Riot is removing that on the PBE. I want that removed from range, because it's basically a bug, right? For melee champions, though, I want that to go to a full 25%. I want it to be a 25% increase if you're a melee champion. That proc damage, higher. Why? Pressy Attack currently loses to Grasp and Dying in, in trades. It does less damage, and Grasp Man Dying, by the time you can even get a reasonable amount of damage on that 12% damage, Grasp procs a second time. Especially because Grasp can be buffered and stays up for like 4 seconds or some shit for, you know, once you actually got it up. Shit's insane. Seriously, go use Grasp Man Dying. Right? Triple buff that shit. 
That's a good buff. That would allow bruisers to actually start to do good trades and basically be a little bit more viable. Um, do not give ranged champions these 75% slow resist keystone. Do not, right? Do not. The last time you did that, it was insanely broken. It allowed them to kite melee champions indefinitely. That is very broken. Don't do it. Don't don't do it, right? Just just don't do it. Like I I don't have a better argument than that. Everyone knows how broken it was. Just don't do it. Just don't. Lethal Temple. Give Lethal Temple a 15% slow resist and tenacity boost on melee. Right now, your general pattern for Lethal Temple on a melee champion is as follows. Jump in, proc Lethal Temple. Get slowed, get CC'd. It falls off, you've accomplished nothing. Lethal Temple should basically, on melee champions, be your ideal keystone. If I'm playing Jax into a CC heavy comp, Lethal Temple should actually be a good choice for me. Now, I know what you're saying, but a uh, Shijin. Uh, Lethal Tempo should be bad into CC comps, because there it's counter. Maybe, but then just, I don't know, do anything else. Like, it's so counterable on a melee champion right now, it effectively doesn't exist. Maybe just buff it, maybe give it, like, I don't know, 35% slow resist, you know? The point is, is that Lethal Tempo should be viable on melee. Like, it should just be viable on melee. I don't think that's a ridiculous thing to say. It's not ridiculous to say, this keystone should be useful on melee. Fleet Footwork, they're giving it crit scaling, fuck that. Right now in the PB it's 3 to 60, change that to 3 to 100, remove the crit scaling, then every champion gets to scale just as well and actually use Fleet Footwork. Again, rain champions already get rapid fire cannon giving them faster charge scaling. They don't need faster charge scaling and also it crits. Like, again, as in my last video, you have two options. Either A, you gray out fleet footwork and you do not allow it to be chosen on anyone who's not an AD carry, or you make it viable on people who aren't AD carries. With their current changes, it will not be viable on anyone who's not an AD carry. It's not viable now. After the bumps, it will only be viable on AD carries. Those are your options, right? Like, I'm not trying to be sarcastic. I'm not trying to be insulting. Well, I am a little bit insulting here because you're making an incredibly dumb decision. But when you make an incredibly dumb decision, maybe there should be someone to say, Hey, you're making a dumb decision. Your circle jerk is leading you astray. All masteries. Include the bonus base damage from Sterix Gage, meaning if Sterix Gage gives you 50 damage, make that count towards your masteries, and makes Titanic Hydra's on hit damage also applied the same way. So if I have, for example, 30 on hit damage from Titanic Hydra and 50 base damage from Sterics, I get 80 damage towards my masteries. This will allow melee champions who use these items to scale up their masteries and widen their available choices, while at the same time, basically just allowing melee champions to... Basically just allow melee champions to choose keystones that are good for them. Rather than choose whatever keystones are left... After you exclude all the ones at scale, it would allow them to build the ones that they actually want to build. And and let's be honest here, guys. Let's be honest. Sterics Gage gives less damage than a normal damage item. Like, even uh, Ghost Play, like, oh, you can maybe get 60 damage on it on, like, a champion like Darius, okay? Like, that's not as much as a Death Stance as a Bloodthirster, you know? This would be, at best, on average, with penetration items. Titanic Hydra is likewise. If I have 4,000 health, then this would still only be giving me... What is that, 75 damage? Let's just be clear. Sterix Gage is a 3,200 gold item. Titanic Hydra is a 3,500 gold item. These items deserve to be powerful, and melee champions deserve to be able to build whatever masteries they want. Triumph, give it diminishing returns. Basically, 15% first kill. If you get a second kill within 10 seconds, 12%. Third kill, 9%. That's the problem. The problem is chain healing on it. The problem isn't using Sterix Gage to win a 1v2. 1v2s need to be possible... So don't nerf the ability to do 1v2s. Uh, Grasping and Dying, I'm not 100% on this, but basically I think the buffer time, when you actually, when you 1, 2, 3, and on the 4th second, when you actually have it available to use, it buffers and it's available for like 4 seconds before it times out and you go back to 0. That makes it very hard to deal with in the laning phase. Nearly impossible, in fact, which means that tanks are just kind of brutalizing all melee champions. So I'm already at 19 minutes, which is very, very long. Um... Yeah, basically, to summarize, um, one, the Reddit mods will never make it this far. Their rules are being incredibly abused. Uh, all my videos that I've posted have been only gameplay related. The videos posted about me are constantly just, ha ha, gay. 
literally no gameplay in them whatsoever, which is against their own rules. <coughs> okay? <coughs> Sorry, I'm sick still. So, fuck you, Reddit mods. Uh, second, top lanes suck so hard right now, dude. It just sucks. It sucks so hard. No top laner is going to tell you, wow, top lane's fun. Even the tank top laners, I bet, are like, well, actually, it does kind of suck. And three, these are my suggestions. These aren't, in total, everything, but this is just like, you know, a little bit of like, hey, can we make this game not suck some serious dick? Like, maybe it only sucks half the dicks on the planet. Maybe not every goddamn dick on the planet should be sucked by top lane right now. Because that's where we're at. That's what's happening right now. That's all. So, there we go.